Generics can be thought of as placeholders for types. Let's create a world struct that has a generic type for a player. By placing T inside the angle brackets, we're saying that T is a generic type. Let's create a player struct that holds some data. And let's add a method to reduce the hit points of the player. Now let's add the world and the player to the world. And finally, let's have the player take some damage. Now let's say that we wanted to see some debug output every time the player takes damage. Now we don't want that in the production build of this AAA game here but we want that during the development process. Now we could add a print statement to the take damage method for the player, but instead of doing that, let's make a debug player that wraps our player objects. And let's add our take damage function to the debug player as well. And now we can print the damage before we call the inner take damage method. And finally we can replace the player on the world with a debug player. And if we run this now, we should see the damage output. Now we never specify what the actual value of player is on the world other than in our main function through type inference. So what happens if we add another function that takes the world as an argument and we try to call the take damage method on the player? If we try to run this code we will get an error message. And that's because we're missing our generic type. If we try to fix this error by simply adding t to world inside angle brackets, we're gonna get yet another error message. Because even though our world is generic, our function is not. So this means we have to make a function generic as well. And this will now compile. Now let's take a moment to talk about this. Here we have two functions. One is generic over t and the other one is not generic at all. The generic function can pass on the type to the value. The non-generic function takes a value as an argument and value still needs a type. So here we have to specify a concrete type. In this case, we choose a string. If we try to call the take damage method on the player field in the world, we're going to get yet another error. And that is because t can be just about anything, as there is nothing preventing you from assigning just about any value to the player field on the world. To make sure that we can only call a take damage method on the player field on the world, we can add a trait bound. And for that, we need a trait. Let's call the take damage function. And finally add the trait bound. This means that whatever type T is, it has to implement the trait damage. That also means that we have to implement the damage trait for both our player and debug player structs. And finally we can call the useWorld function. And just to clarify, the reason we implement the damage trait for both the player and the debug player is because we want to be able to swap the debug player for the actual player at some point. So what happens if we want to add the take damage function as a method to the world? And just like with our use world function, we have to add the trait bound. And we can now call damage player directly on the world. It is possible to have more than one generic type, to have multiple generic types, separate them with a comma.
You can also have multiple trait bounds and you add them with a plus sign. And now you know a bit about generics and trait bounds.